Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 17. As expected, today we will continue building our construction hub, which we will manage to finish up pretty much entirely by the end of the episode. Except for a couple small oversights on my part. One of those will be the lack of power in the buildings on the outer edge of the area, as well as a way to drop off workers for the two production buildings. We will end up running into a small snag in that regard, which will require a bit of extra work to get around. Apart from this main focus on the hub, we will also start building a handful of apartment blocks in that recently sectioned off area, which in the end also turned out to be out of range for the local power substation, so it will need to be dealt with too. Other than that, it will be business as usual. Fixing things mostly. Before we get started, if this is not your first video from this channel, you already know what to expect. If you want to be kept up to date, please consider subscribing, and if you like what you see, leaving a like will also help letting me know what to focus on. But enough talking, let's get into it. As usual, we check the research status, mostly to make sure we keep on top of the population booster study. The rest will let us know when they are done. There is still this road we need to upgrade in the industrial zone, so let's get started on that. We just need to add back a service road, and if we do this segment by segment, we shouldn't block entry into any of the buildings. In the last episode, I did end up mistakenly changing one of the slip lane signs, so let's fix that real quick, and check that all of them are set up correctly at the same time. Might as well get the NATO tourist research done, no point doing it later. How about we do these apartment blocks next? I would like to have something taller than usual, but nothing that would look out of place. Yeah, these are just what I was looking for. I did try out a couple kinds of arrangements while placing them, complete with mirroring. I will arrive at the final one in a little bit. It seems these towers have balconies only on one side. Let's make those face outward, and leave the windows facing into the middle. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this arrangement. There is plenty of room in the middle for some decorations. Seeing that crossroad in the middle gave me an idea. How about we create a small circular footpath there, instead of just a plain looking intersection. Okay, I trimmed it back too much. Let's start over, and do it properly. Might as well place the centerpiece now, should make it easier to judge the distances necessary for the circle.
a tiny bit wonky, but I was ready to move on from this part at this point. From the water, those towers do look quite distinct in the town skyline. Only the Ferris will will be taller than them. I also made sure to disallow citizens from settling in as soon as they are done building. We need to be extra sure they can reach everything important before opening the floodgates. Anyways, the industrial road is ready for the next segment. To make the process shorter, I temporarily disconnected the demolition offices from it, so we can deal with one long segment, instead of multiple short ones. And we just ran out of money. Filling up the construction storages can be quite an expensive endeavor. For now, instead of taking out a whole new loan, I just repaid the oldest one I could afford. But I will just end up taking the full amount out anyways in a bit. Since we have two fuel distribution offices now, they can be daisy chained, so they will keep themselves stocked with fuel. Which meant we needed some extra trucks in the second office. For now, I just send two of them over from the original. Okay, I think we might as well tell two of the bitumen trucks to go on the fuel distribution line instead. No point making them sit around when they could be hauling something instead. Let's finish decorating this sport field behind the school. A couple more trees, and maybe a row of bushes in the back will be enough. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all we needed to make the place look nice. And since we had nothing better to do, I decided to just do another apartment block courtyard. Alright, only one more segment needed to finish upgrading this road. I forgot to rebuild the demo office driveways, and I will keep on forgetting it for the rest of the episode. I'm sure I will remember it one day. How about we go around and finish placing the road signs in the different intersections we have in the Republic? The traffic flow is more or less fine, but we might as well do it.
Nice, all the important roads in the industrial sector are fully upgraded to asphalt. I am often asked why I didn't use concrete panel roads instead, since it would fit the area. I think the extra speed granted by the asphalt outweighs the aesthetic considerations. I know I'm often a sucker for decorating things, but even I need to draw a line somewhere. Checking the walkability of the innermost tower, that one looks to be in reach of everything important. For a second I couldn't really decide what to research in the technical university next. Then I looked at how many TVs were in the Republic, so I went with that. Later on, I will end up remembering just how ungodly huge the TV station really is, and that's where I will start going down another route in the research tree. And it seems we had another death spike, but not as big as we used to have. We are perfectly well equipped to handle these momentary setbacks at this point. I really wanted to speed up the construction on these buildings in the hub, and to achieve that, I called the road cranes home. I was hoping they would go work in those building sites instead, since they were high priority. Well, one of them did end up going to the warehouse, so that's progress I guess. Now we just need buses to deliver more than one worker at a time. We do end up with a bit of a traffic pileup on this intersection from time to time, since we are giving the town an industrial direction's priority, but they tend to clear up after a while. Traffic jams are only really a problem if they keep getting longer. If they clear up by themselves, then it's fine. Next, how about we do a bit of resource scouting? The next big industry will be steel for sure, and we need a good spot for it. We have two real choices. I really don't want to build the current town too much bigger than it is now, so I would rather not use that for the steel industry too. I would rather build a new city for that. We have a coal and an iron deposit close to that huge island, so we could use this place I suppose. But the distance between the deposits is a bit higher than I would like to be honest. Yeah, definitely too far apart to make local belting a solution. We might still be able to do it if we place the steel mill somewhere in between. We could even do the processing right next to it, and only deal with the raw or over those longer distances, maybe with some trains, or maybe even cable cars. Yeah, I like the sound of cable cars. We'll need to think about it. We also have a convenient pair of deposits close to this town, but as I've said, I would rather not turn this into a colossal town if I can help it. I would like to have specialized communities for most industries. Looking at the tech tree, I was reminded that we have a research that will make us join OPEC. 
that would be kind of nice, it should make oil exports less volatile, and it would also pay more. Might be worth if we ever end up exporting the crude oil. And the construction warehouse is done. After setting the space allocations for the components, we can tell the distribution office to start filling it up. Since these components are very expensive, I only told it to go for 10%. No need for any more than that. With both components on the way, we can tell the construction offices to switch over from the border to the local warehouse, making the trips a lot shorter. And would you look at that, the aggregate storage is also done. Time to fill it up with gravel. This one is super cheap, we can go more than 10%, that's for sure. This harvester is extremely worn down, and even sending it home didn't make it stay put. To ensure it gets fixed, I had to put a pause to the farming efforts. I wish vehicles would stop working if they reach their maintenance threshold. Well, this might take a while. And we have gravel stored locally. I didn't tell the offices to stop going to the border, the loading station isn't finished yet. Even the concrete plant is done, but the cement silo isn't. We need to wait a bit more before we can start using it. Also, I already tested it, and it is possible to give the cement silo a train station drop-off, and I might do it one day, but we can just use trucks for now. I completely forgot about this student dorm house. It already had the materials delivered, so we could just let people in from the streets to work on it. I even unassigned the bus office from it, we can finish this with local workers only. With two road cranes, it will be done in no time. At the refinery, I was glad to see no trucks queuing anymore. As long as they kept moving, they were making the most amount of money they could. And it seems the bitumen storage for the asphalt plant got built in the meantime, so we could redirect the trucks delivering the stuff there, before they went to the border. This also gave me the idea to rename the two output tanks at the refinery. Should make it easier to tell them apart. In fact, Maybe giving them visible labels would make that even easier. I did consider doing that for some of the more important buildings we have, but there really is no need. We know what's what just by looking at them.
Overusing those building labels would just end up oversaturating the landscape. Well, that death spike turned out to be larger than it first seemed. Still, nothing we can't handle. But I did notice a small dip in the number of births, and indeed, the relevant technology expired, so I told the medical university to do it again. And in the school, I noticed that we had quite a few teachers with more than 65% loyalty, so I increased the threshold once more. And it seems we still had enough of them show up, so it was a worthwhile change to make. In fact, I did end up setting that number for all of the educational facilities. I didn't really like how trucks spent so much time unloading bitumen at the hub, and I still wanted them to export some of it, so I set the line to only drop off half of what they were carrying. In a little bit, I will set that number even lower. I want to keep making money, and let's be honest, apart from the occasional spikes in demand, the overall need for asphalt isn't as great as some of the other materials. The student dormitory is done, but it won't really see much use for a while. Every single house has a university and walking range already, so there is no need for students to take up residence if they can still live at home while they study. I also wanted to get started on cleaning up around the border. We have quite a few superfluous buildings there. Let's start with the road depots. I decided to give traffic lights a try for this intersection. As I've said before, it operates just fine with simple road signs, but I wanted to see if maybe using lights might make it a bit better. I didn't bother setting up a custom schedule, I just used the default. I did change the timing to be longer though, I wanted to give everyone time to get through. Huh, it seems one of the apartment blocks have all the materials delivered already. Unfortunately, it's one of the outer ones, so we can't really use it until we sort out the walkability for it, some of the services are out of range for it. And it seems its neighbor is also about to have everything on site. But again, same story, it's just barely out of range for some of the services, so they will need to have some of them built locally. And just as before, I wanted to speed things up a little, so I called the road cranes home, hoping they would go there instead. Only this time I forgot to set the building sites to high priority, so that's not what happened. Oh well, we all make mistakes. Once I noticed the priority, I did put them both up to high, but decided to just let things play out by themselves from there. And then, we got a notification about low health. Thankfully, it was just the usual nonsense we get whenever a single person moves into a new building. As the building slowly fills up, the different personal issues will be averaged out, and we stop getting unnecessary alerts. We are once more getting close to running out of money. 
filling up all the construction storages does put a strain on our finances, and having to stop the majority of our exports while those storage tanks are getting topped up also contribute to this temporary setback. We just need to get through it while the bitumen tank is slowly being filled. Alright. If we wanted, we could build an oil pipeline connection to the Soviet neighbors. We need to research the same for our friends in NATO to be able to join OPEC, so that was the next one we went for. Looking at the walkability for this tower, it has a lot of stuff in range, except for the town shopping center, and the cinema. Not quite convinced that upgrading the footpaths will be enough to bridge the gap this time around, so we might need to build new ones for this neighborhood. Same goes for the hospital. It's in range for the ambulances, but not for the main building. We will need to build at least a small clinic in the area. It seems I used normal asphalt roads by mistake here. We should use the one with street lights. and the basic TV research is done. Seeing the one for the actual station building did remind me just how big that thing is, so instead I opted to get started on garbage sorting and processing. About time we delve deeper into those new mechanics at last. At the same time, those two housing blocks got built, but they did have an error message about power. We have no electricity that far away from the city center. And we have only one medium voltage connection left on the transformer, so it was time to build another one. Of course, we need to be able to continue building that power line further into the Republic, so we also needed to build a switch. Wow, we managed to build this whole underground cable with no break in the line. That's pretty lucky. It seems the cement silo is done. We can start filling it up, but just as it was with the components, we don't need to go overboard. We can just keep it filled to 10%, and only do the rest once we can afford it. This is where I tried to sort out the worker transport for the two production facilities in the hub. Sure, we could just use individual lines for both, but I would prefer to have a central bus stop to drop off people. Not to mention the power. 
The local substation doesn't reach this far out, so we needed one of those too. Now about that bus stop. The most logical place for it would be in front of the concrete plant, between the road and the rail tracks. That would take care of one of them at least, but, no matter what, there was simply no way to place a footpath connection anywhere near the asphalt plant. It is completely boxed in, and none of the nearby roads are long enough to accept a footpath. I could only think of one solution. That driveway in front of the facility looked long enough to break into two smaller segments, but to do that, we needed to rebuild it. That was the only way to introduce a node into it. Once that road is demolished, we can rebuild it only within two steps, making sure there is a node in the middle we can connect to. And I'm afraid this is where we will have to leave things. I was already over the time limit I set myself for these episodes, so let's recap. We did manage to get most of the construction hub done, and we are pretty much ready to start using it. We just need to sort out small things, like the power, workers, and that's pretty much it. Once all the deliveries from the border die down, our finances should be in a better place, and we can at last start paying back our considerable amount of debt. I might need to do a small time-lapse video to make it happen, at least until we have a 2 million rubles worth of loan allowance, that would be plenty enough to at least get started on steel. Anyways, if you haven't done it already, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel, and leaving a like would also let me know that this video was worth making. If you feel that it was good enough, and you can afford it, please consider going to my Ko-fi page, which you can find in the description, and donate an amount that you feel is appropriate. And if you did like what you've seen, there should be links to some of my other videos and playlists on the screen. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.